Let us pray. Lord, open my eyes that I may see you in all things. Open my ears that I may hear your voice loud and clear. Open my heart that I may love you unconditionally. Heal my body, fill my soul, and change my life forever. Amen. Johnny Carson, we all know, was once the great host of The Tonight Show. One night, he was interviewing a young man of about eight years old. The reason for the interview was that this young man had rescued two of his friends from an accident site in a coal mine outside his hometown in West Virginia. As he questioned this young man, he learned that he is a Christian. So Mr. Carson asked, so do you go to Sunday school? And the boy replied, yes. He was asked again, what did you learn on last Sunday when you were at the Sunday school? And the boy thought for it for a few minutes. And then he said, our lesson was about Jesus who went to a wedding and turned water into wine. And everyone you can imagine, uh, of course, they were respectful, just didn't burst into laughter, but they did, and the, this little boy squirmed in his chair. Then the next question came from Mr. Carson. What did you learn from that? The boy thought for a while and said, If you are going to have a wedding, make sure you invite Jesus. One day Moses was leading the people of Israel into the Promised Land. Then he came across a situation where his father-in-law, Hobab, was planning to depart Moses and his family to return to his homeland. And Moses said to him, Father, we are setting out to a place which the Lord has promised. Come with us, and we will treat you well. But of course, Hobab was not sure of it. But the story goes on saying that Moses invites him and treats him well, promising God's love and care. He appreciates his gifts and he appreciates his talent in helping him and the people of Israel, leading them out of the wilderness. The people of Israel is the people of the promise. They need to be led to the land of promise. Moses tells him, do not leave us. You know where we should camp in the wilderness. Because you know this place very well, and you will serve as our eyes. Moreover, if you go with us, whatever good the Lord does for us, the same we will do for you. And as they set out, the cloud of the Lord was over them, shading them, giving them the shade from the heat, giving them light in the night. God led the way to success in their lives. God fought for them. And if you believe in the way of God, how much God would work for you in your life. God watched over them. Moses invited God to be their shield and their strength. Arise, O Lord, he invites the Lord into his life and the life of the people of Israel. Let your enemies be shattered. He asks the Lord to fight for them. He invites the Lord to the tent and tells the Lord, Lord, we need you to fight for us. We cannot do it on our own. Fight for us. Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Compare this to the story of Mary. Jesus, do whatever is needed. Fight for these people. Help them in their difficult time. Arise, my son, this family needs your care. Yes, invitation Inviting Jesus into our lives work. Moses invites a Hobab, a pagan according to the Bible, into the presence and power of God. There are several stories in the Bible where people were invited to the presence of God and so shall we invite God into our lives through people that we know we may not know, through people who are pagans and people we may know we may not know, appreciate and value. This whole process of inviting God into our lives or others, into, the, into, the, uh, into God's life, is what I want to call a simple practical life in everyday living. 
Think of Andrew inviting Peter to meet Jesus. Think of Philip inviting Nathaniel to meet Jesus and his life is changed forever. The Samaritan woman, she goes to her village and invites the entire village to meet with Jesus. And as a result, she was transformed. The Levi called a gathering of his friends and family to introduce Jesus, to introduce Jesus to them and let them know what a wonderful teacher he is. And they all come and their lives were changed. Cornelius invites his family and friends so that they can hear Peter who speaks of Jesus. And as a result, they were baptized. So this boy we are talking about, even though he didn't know the implications of all what he said, said something profound in spiritual life. Invite Jesus into every wedding. Invite Jesus into every life situation. If you are going for a party, invite the Lord to accompany you. Every life situation such as illness and disappointment, sadness and failure and success and more, no matter what it is, whether it is a graduation, whether it is a trip that you are taking on vacation, invite the Lord to travel with you. This whole process of inviting Jesus is the opportunity for God to do a miracle in your life. And that's what we see. He was invited into the wedding where he begins with his, with his first miracle. Some of us are afraid to admit that God can still do miracles in our lives because miracles in our lives are no more or miracles in the world today are no more of a smart appeal or of intelligent feel. Miracles are meant for those who do not have any reason according to some people. And according to some other people, miracles are not comfortable. It's not comfortable for many in today's world. So if you know of anyone who is uncomfortable with God's miracles in their lives, tell them this beautiful tiny scripture passage where the Lord invites all of us saying this, Come now and let us reason together. Come now, come to me, let us reason together. We read that in Isaiah chapter 1. Forget about the mumbo-jumbo faith. And let us put our reasons together with God. Invite God to a rational process with you. Let us see who wins the game. Let us invite God to be the guest of our everyday life. And let us make him the moderator of our conversation. Let us see what happens to our debates and conversations. Let us see how God performs his miracle when he takes charge. Inviting God to be present in our celebrations, which by the way is a state of life rather than a state of amusement, as Abraham Joshua Herschel would say. People of our time are losing the power of celebration. Instead of celebrating, we seek to be amused or entertained. Celebration is an active state, an act of expressing reverence or appreciation. To be entertained is a passive state. It is to receive pleasure afforded by an amusing act or a spectacle. Celebration is confrontation, giving attention to the transient and meaning of one's action. It is transformational. This is what I believe when I call you when I invite you to invite God into your life, let us celebrate God in our lives because God might confront us, that might change and that will give birth to new miracles. Make it a state of life where God is always present and ready to work a miracle. We can only see the miracle if we have trained our eyes to see the cloud as the shade of God, God's love, in the hot summer day and as light in the middle of the night, just like the people of Israel. If we have the courage to invite God into our lives, I promise you, we will see the cloud in the day and cloud in the night as God's presence every day. But if we do not invite God, what difference does it make? They are simply a cloud that has not miraculous powers or transformational qualities. 
Moses saw God's gift in Hobab in helping them through the wilderness. So he invites him. In wise to be the beginning of the miracle in their lives, in their journey to the land of promise. That they may not get lost in the wilderness. And God confirms it. So invite yourself into the presence of God. Hear what Andrew says in his invitation to Philip. Come and see. Invite yourself to come and see the Lord. Invite your friends to come and see the Lord. Come, let us reason together because if you really like reasoning, you wouldn't find a better rational being than God. Come, when you are tired and lost, because when you are labored and heavy laden, come and rest. There is no better person, better being on earth that will give you better rest. And so God invites if inviting someone into your home and life gives you such joy and pleasure, how about inviting God into your lives every day into everyday life situation and every trouble and sorrow and joy? It will only increase your pleasure of being yourself, with yourself. Moreover, there, is a, there are some perks. Inviting God is the least stressful and the most powerful. You don't have to work your tail off or clean up. No dishes to put away and no impressions to be worried about after the party. So don't give up on God because you can't see God like you see me or see your family and friends. But invite. God hasn't given up on you. And that's why week after week, day after day, God invites you to be with him in prayer, in celebration, meaning in confrontation, in transformational process. Come now says the Lord, let us reason together. Speak to him like Mary did. Do what he needs to, what needs to get done. Ask the Lord to be with you. Confront the Lord and share your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, your concerns, your worries, your families, your expectations and your hopes. Share it with the Lord whom you have invited. And that's my blessing and that's my prayer for you. Invite your God into your life. Let us reason with God. Thank you.